What we're looking at is a thin baffle. It's a dust separator. Dust collects inside it. It's powered by a shop vac and dust does not get into the shop vac until the theme baffle reservoir is at least 30% full. This is what I use for my dust collection. That is, that's what I use for all the dust collection on my saws and my sanders. I want a separate unit for my CNC router and that's what we're building today. Okay, so here's the router. Some of you have seen it before. It's a two foot by four foot bed. It's pretty decent. This is where I want to mount the dust collection system. I'll build a shelf for this shop vac and then I will plumb it up to the top of this, which I'll uh, build my theme baffle on top of this. Then what I'll do is I'll come off the theme baffle with uh, this flex hose and I will uh, just attach it right, right here to the gantry. This will be mounted rigid here and I'll have a separate hose coming up and over that attaches to a, uh, a dust broom surrounding the router bit. But at this point, this video is only to construct the theme baffle. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is plug the bottom of this thing. So uh, I just drew a line around here. And then I'm also going to need an interface up at the top on the outside of the tube. So uh, I took a divider and just drew a line around there. It's going to give me about an inch and a quarter wide circle around it. And I'll just cut these out on the bandsaw to get started. So this is a concrete form and it's, it's got like a, like a waxy inner surface that uh, it's, it's supposed to be like a mold release and that'll be good for the sawdust but I want to glue this in so I need to sand that off. It's still in there so I think I'm going to have to scrape it with a blade. Okay, that'll be good. That'll work. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, I'll put some screws in there. Okay. That's solid, that should be fine. Okay, so this doesn't have a coating. I sanded it, it, it turned out okay. Uh, then I'll just apply the glue onto the wood this time. Make sure to get it in between the little slot there. Now just put some screws into that. Now you may have noticed there's a little bit of gap here and there, uh, but that's not really going to matter because I'm going to seal this up well with silicone. So the only other thing this needs is a window for me to be able to see when it's full. And for that I'm just going to drill a couple of holes in there with a Forstner bit and uh, glue in this welding helmet cover lens and that should be fine. Now I know that this thing needs to be emptied when it's about 30% full, so that's where I'm putting the window. And I'm going to make two of them. It's kind of hard to see, but I just have a piece of wood and a wedge in there to hold it all in place until that silicone dries. Here I'm using a divider to describe a circle that'll be the basis of the main body for the top and the bottom. Then I'll come back and cut it out on the bandsaw. Okay, so we'll separate these two out. 
There needs to be a vacuum discharge out the top, and then there needs to be the baffle. Now I know that the baffle needs to end right before this inlet, and it needs to go about 60% of the way around. I also know that that baffle needs to be at least half the width of the hose, but uh, I'm gonna make it a little wider than that. So then I'll drill a hole here and here with a Forstner bit, and then come around and follow these lines with the jigsaw. Okay, that's it, and that's just right. So that hole for my suction fitting, which is also a one inch PVC, um, turned out just right. So what I'll do is I'll just drill a couple holes in there and seal it up with silicone. So I've installed a guide fence onto my router and the idea is that it'll give me a, a nice uniform line around the entire edge. When I get over here to this corner, uh, I'm going to have to freehand it, but most of the way around it should work pretty well. And you can see here on my first attempt it kind of screwed up a little bit because uh, there's a learning curve to using this. I probably should have practiced on a piece of scrap first. My, now to make my sidewalls, and I think this five gallon bucket is going to be just the ticket. So the saw didn't leave the best edge, so I went back with aviation snips and straightened it out. And now I think I'll just mark an area from the bottom, and I, uh, I want to keep this, uh, this image here because it shows a kid falling into the bucket and we want to make sure that doesn't happen. So it turns out there was a slight taper to the bucket and because of that, it, uh, this is kind of flexy in a way that I'm not really digging that much. But uh, it's Memorial Day and I don't want to wait till tomorrow for the plastic store to open. And uh, buying it at the home center is ungodly expensive, like 10 times what it would cost at the plastic store. So that's out of the question. Uh, so we, what I'm going to do is I'm just, I cut these strips, I'm going to drill holes in them and I'm going to kind of nail it, nail them on around the edges to hold this thing together in place of the clamps and that should do okay. Now all I need to do is punch a hole in this to fit this two-thirds of the way up, and I'll just do that with a Forstner bit. Okay, so there's my hole to fit this hose, and it fits. Unfortunately, it didn't leave enough meat for the wood to actually hold together, but uh, I don't see that as a problem. I think I can just uh, glue it in, and, and it'll be fine. Okay, so I've got my theme baffle, and I've got my reservoir tube, and by a matter of complete coincidence, the inside or the outside radius here is exactly the same as the inside radius here, because I totally forgot to measure that. Now all we need is a way to hook the two together. Now this is definitely going to need a gasket. So I got I got this silicone rubber. I'm gonna just hot glue that right around there. A couple of couple of wraps.
And I apparently didn't get any footage of making these steel clamping brackets that hold the baffle onto the reservoir. Okay, there it is. Now we'll plumb it up and test it. Okay, so I plumbed it up and I tested it and there were leaks everywhere. So what I did was I went around all the joints and I added silicone, then I plugged this up and allowed the silicone to get sucked into the joints. Then I came back with a second coat of construction adhesive and now we're going to let that dry and then we're going to do a test actually sucking up some stuff. See how much actually makes it into the separator and how much passes through to the vac. Okay, let's try it out. See if anything makes it into the uh, vacuum cleaner. A little bit made it in. <clears throat> all in all, that's not bad. Well, I measured the amount of sawdust that was in the Thien Baffle Reservoir and it held 175 cubic inches. The amount that made it through to the vacuum cleaner was one soda can full, which is about 5 cubic inches. Uh, that's around 2% and I can live with that. Uh, that's, that's actually not too bad for something made entirely of scrap. The only thing new on that was the uh, silicone and the construction adhesive and the PVC elbow on the top. So I got like uh, $3 into that thing and uh, that's, that's quite a bit better than the uh, cyclone separators that you see uh, for sale around various places. So please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.